Have you ever been to Ethiopia? Oh, yes, I've been several times. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to go in recent times, partly because uh, I wrote a, an article when I worked for the BBC, which I retired from in 2013, um, which they didn't like. And uh, they not that they say no, it's just that they're never quite round getting around saying yes to a visa request. Hmm. Um, were you able to uh, kind of see there maybe a different view on, I would say, the world in general, maybe, um, from the different ethnicities in um, Ethiopia? So yeah. the way that they think different? Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they think differently, but they, they all have their own cultures. They all have their own traditions. And uh, as I said, there are many, there are many languages, including some which are, you know, indigenous to the people of Ethiopia, you know, the, which they, which they, they worship. And, um, you know, that, that's, it's, it's a very complex uh, story. And one, I must say that, you know, is <laughs> to say one, I would be an expert and it would be untrue. Um, and then, of course, you have the relationship with the people of Eritrea, who are to the north of um, Ethiopia and were carved out of Ethiopia by many powers, by the uh, the Ottoman Empire, by the Egyptians, by the Greeks, um, and then eventually in the 1800s, uh, late 1800s, by the Italians. So they, they took a colony, like many other colonies. And the Eritreans then said, hang on, we are really have the same rights to independence as any other African state. And um, they, they were independent for a brief period under the Italians and then afterwards under the British because Britain took Eritrea when, you may remember, the Italians used uh, Eritrea as a staging board in the 1930s, 1935, to try and expand into Ethiopia under Mussolini, and uh, the fascists really wanted to make this the heart of a huge empire in the center of Africa, which would include Somalia, Somaliland, uh, and all sorts of other areas. That was their aim. And uh, in the end, they failed because the Ethiopians continued resisting, even though uh, Emperor Haile Selassie had to flee to Britain. And, um, you know, they did take the capital, Addis Abba, But uh, the fight continued, and then Britain came in both from Somalia and through Sudan. And it went through Sudan into Eritrea, and Eritrea was under uh, British military administration for a good number of years, including after the war. But Britain didn't want it as a colony, because they were getting rid of their colonies at that period. And they said in the end to the United Nations, well, you must decide what happens. We can't decide. Uh, and the, uh, they then went about... Um, having a plebiscite, um, and, well, not a plebiscite, but a, you know, a, a hearing. The United Nations sent a team of of administrators who came around and said, well, what do you want, which way should we go? And eventually they agreed that it should be part of, er of Ethiopia, but as a part of a federation, and they were supposed mm -hmm. to have a considerable independence. And uh, Haile Selassie ended that, in, that status and just made it another province in 61. That was when the Eritreans said, right, that's it we'll start fighting. And for 30 years, they fought for the independence, which they finally won by taking their capital, Asmara, in 1991. And when did, when did Ethiopia become independent? Not from Eritrea, but uh, from, from, I think, Italy then? No, Ethiopia was, in a sense, was never not independent, because there were always parts of, of Ethiopia which were not... Um, which were not uh, held by the, uh, by the, uh, the, the Italians. Uh, I mean, the, the British came, came through right in the early part of the, of the war. I can't remember, was it 39 or 40, 41, uh, and, and took it and ousted the, the Italians. Um, and there was terribly heavy fighting, particularly in Eritrea, but then other parts of, of the country. And as I say, they attacked from uh, three different areas, from, from Sudan, through Eritrea, and through Somalia. And um, they returned uh, Haile Selassie to to their throne, to his throne. Uh, so, since there's so many different uh, groups in um, in Ethiopia, do they have uh, are there 
do they have different rights? What what is the uh, situation in general of the form of government look like? But also um, uh, of how the different groups get um, get treated, I guess, under um, over the under the government. Well, as I said, there are two different ways of looking at these things, and uh, under the Emperor Haile Selassie, uh, who was then ousted uh, because there was a terrible famine. And a military government called the Derg, the military committee, uh, took power and, in fact, became uh, an ally of the Soviet Union. Uh, and the people of Tigray fought against that uh, because they saw that they also, like the Eritreans, had an element of a right to self-determination, whether that meant full independence or just a right to a federal status within Ethiopia. And they fought um, from the 1970s right through to 1991. And they had a difficult relationship with the Eritreans. Sometimes they worked with them against the, the Ethiopian state. Sometimes they worked against each other. But in 1991, the Eritrean liberation movement, the Eritrean People's Liberation Movement, marched into Asmara, their capital, and the Tigray People's Liberation Movement marched into Addis Ababa with Eritrean support. So for mm. one moment, there was this unity of these two chunks of Ethiopia that were fighting against the centralizing tendencies. And then Eritrea became an independent state with the United Nations. The United Nations held a referendum, in, and in 1993, it became a fully independent state and a member of the United of the UN and the African Union and all the rest of it. But the it was the Tigrayans that took control of um, Addis Ababa, and they ruled it until uh, uh, a few years ago, 2018. So from 1993 to 2018, the Tigrayans hold the reins of power in Ethiopia with other groups, but essentially they were the ones in control. And they then brought in a different kind of constitution. They said, we must have a federal structure. And there is what they imposed, what was called ethnic federalism. So they grouped, I think, various ethnicities, and each one then had their separate rights to self-determination up to and including independence, um, a bit along the model that Stalin brought in in the Soviet Union. And uh, it was a complete shift of power from the center to the regions, except behind the scenes, the Tigrans, you, you would not be surprised, managed to set up sort of front parties which were pretty pro them. So mm. uh, they still managed to control things, even though in principle they'd given away power. And that ended then 2018. The uh, Tigrans are leave power, they are pushed out, and um, the current Prime Minister comes in, Prime Minister Abiy, who is himself half Oromo and half um, Amhara. And that is the moment when things move towards the war that we've just seen.